In 2008, Jorge Molina was arrested for murder because Google Data placed his cell phone at the scene of the crime, which is true. But Molina himself was not at the scene of the crime, which is also true. So why did it take the police six days of holding Molina in a cage and interrogating him to sort this out and actually believe him? Part of the answer is a new investigative tool used by the police called Geofence Warrants. And any of us can be caught in one of these nets at any time. I'll come back to what happened in Mr. Molina's case later, but first, what is a geofence warrant and what can you do to help protect yourself? The police use these broad warrants in cases where they believe a crime has happened in a specific location at a specific time, and they're trying to simply find out who was in that location. But how common are these warrants? Surely they're only used for serious crimes like murder, right? Well, I did a quick search in the Stafford County, Virginia circuit court records just to see how many geofence warrants they might have in this one particular county that's near my office. Turns out these warrants are used all the time. Here's an example. First, there's a search warrant for location data around a commercial address. So this is a very public area where some tools had allegedly been stolen. The affidavit for the search warrant contains zero evidence that a crime actually occurred other than the owner of the tools simply reporting them to be missing. So a crime may not have even happened in this case. The owner could be reporting the tools missing as part of a false police report to support an insurance claim for some valuable tools that maybe he wants to upgrade or replace. But the cops still obtained a geofence warrant for a large commercial area for a large chunk of time, from the close of business one day until business started up the next day. The police in this one county in Virginia obtained several geofence warrants just in the past few months. However, the one that's most concerning to me is related to a report of vehicle tampering. Not murder, not grand theft auto, vehicle tampering. In this case, the police actually did have video from neighbors and owners of the vehicles showing that a crime did in fact actually occur but it's still chilling to see location data being demanded for a large swath of a residential neighborhood, all because of petty theft. But is this problem getting worse? Google has published some data about how many geofence warrants it has received. They received 982 geofence warrants in 2018. In 2019, they received 8,936 geofence warrants. And in 2020, they fielded 11,554 geofence warrants. We don't know how many geofence warrants Google will receive in 2022. However, we have to assume that the number is going to keep increasing and I'll bet increasing at a stellar rate as the cops get together, swap stories, teach each other, and use this new tool to their advantage. Cell phone tracking by the police gets even worse if you're an actual identified suspect of interest. The police can track us individually with our phones via GPS known as location pinging. This is a direct approach where police obtain a search warrant for your phone to get the real-time location updates where your phone is for a period of 30 days at a time. But how often is that used? My quick search in Stafford County, Virginia yielded even more of these real-time location-based warrants for individual phones. It really seems like anytime the police have an actual suspect of a crime, they're not sure where the person is, but they have a cell phone number that's reported to be used by them, even if it's not actually their number, they go get one of these real-time location-based warrants. Those warrants consist of a variety of alleged crimes, but the most menial offense I found was a suspect who's being tracked by his cell phone for failing to appear in court. Your cell phone is obviously a police tracking chip and you're voluntarily carrying it around with you. I am too. But what can you and I do about that? Another day and we just trying to make a way now. The hatred going strong to every single day now. I hear these rappers, they ain't trying to talk about it. They ain't trying to get involved and they would rather catch a wave now. But how cool is the gunplay when the strays will hit the playground? Eh? But never mind about it. Cause once you make it out, you think this world just don't affect you anymore. Until somebody from your past come back to settle the score. But you're probably like me and not quite ready to take that drastic of a step right now. Instead, here are some simple things that we could do today. First, disable Google's location reporting. Google tells us that this feature is to help us have a better experience and to make better recommendations for us and help us know where we're gonna, we wanna go and what things we wanna do. But it's also part of the trove of data that Google is gonna turn over to the police upon request. I was shocked when I went into my phone and I started researching this video and I looked at my location history. I should have taken screenshots for you guys. You could see everywhere I went 
anywhere I had gone, any place. You could see when I, we were in Montreal last time and the coffee shops we went to, the paths we walked down the street, it's shocking how much data is saved in your Google location history. Delete it. Second, turn off your phone's wireless features when not in use, such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS. I used to think friends who did this were a bit paranoid until I was talking with a local defense attorney friend of mine about a local case where the suspect was placed at the scene of the crime because his cell phone logged on to the victim's home network. So if you think that it's not a problem that your Wi-Fi is connecting to your local Lowe's or Walmart or the coffee shop anytime you go in there, you're gonna be on the list of police suspects to try to figure out who did something wrong, even if you weren't there at the time of the, of the offense. Third, you could grab an inexpensive Faraday bag to stash your phone in when not in use. A Faraday bag could help foil that police tracking and it could be a very effective measure against you being tempted to text while you're driving as well. Side note, I think this is a great way to teach young drivers to not use their phone while driving. I'll drop a link down in the description below. But to go truly private with your phone, you're gonna need to take more drastic measures, short of a hammer. There are various high-end private phone options on the market that are focused on privacy and security, such as the $2,000 Librem 5. But I think that's more than most people want to pay for privacy, especially when the phone maybe doesn't have all the features as the cool flagship phones from Apple or Google. Instead of that, I'm experimenting with an inexpensive option where you can maybe buy a old refurbished phone model, you could get a prepaid SIM card, and you can install a privacy-focused operating system such as Graphene OS. Theoretically, if you've set up a phone like this, it would not be tied to your name at all, and if you don't use Google services on it, it should not be feeding your location data to the Google mothership for the police to later seize via a search warrant. But what happened to Jorge Molina? The police finally figured out, after six days of interrogating him in a cage, that Mr. Molina had lent an old phone to the actual suspect of the murder. The phone was still signed in to Mr. Molina's Google account. Let this be another lesson. If you dispose of an old electronic device, you need to securely wipe it of everything tied to you. After being released, Mr. Molina sued the city of Avondale and they later settled out of court. I have a quick favor to ask. What else would you like to see on this channel? Did you like this video? Do you have other ideas for privacy in our digital lives with our phones and electronics? Drop a comment below and I'll be sure to take a look. I'll try to hang out and have some discussion with you guys. And remember, don't talk to the police.